In this video series, we are talking about the pre-chorus. And in the first video, we talked about the pre-chorus as the bit that creates tension before the chorus. So in the first video, we were talking all about chord techniques for creating that tension. In this video, what I wanna do is run through five really, really simple melodic techniques that can also create tension in the pre-chorus. The first technique I wanna cover is using a rising melodic contour to create that tension. So a contour in melody is really the overall shape and direction of the melody. And it's a way to think about melody in a visual sense rather than just as pitches and notes. Mm -hmm. And so if we understand a rising melodic contour as essentially working from a low note towards a higher note, we can use that to build tension. And mm -hmm. it's used in lots of songs. Mm -hmm. And one song that I want to show it to you in is the song Firework by Katy Perry. Two, three, four. Do you know that there's still a chance for you? Cause there's a spark in you You just gotta ignite the light And let it shine Just on the night Like the far along the night So I'm not gonna horrify you by trying to sing the chorus to that song <laughs> But even without singing the chorus, the whole point is to feel the tension that is created by that rising melody and you are so ready for the chorus and when it comes, it lands so strong and so much of that is the contour of that melody, right? Like starting low, going high. And even though at the end of the pre-chorus, where it actually goes far, like coming down, but that's right at the end after this huge, 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 huge build up mm. that then delivers us to this epic and we perceive uh, a low to high shape as a build in energy too, don't we? Yeah, absolutely. Like we feel this sense of energy rising and we also feel it being associated with the dynamics. Mm. So it's, it's starting off quieter and getting louder. It's building energy. It's going from low to high. Everything is moving towards this climax, yeah. which is then that first downbeat of the chorus. Great. So technique number one, rising melodic contour. The second technique I want to talk about is ending your pre-chorus on an unstable note. So in any major key, we generally refer to the one, the three, and the five, those three note choices as being the stable options, which leaves us with two, four, six, and seven as our unstable options. Those are the ones that feel like they need to resolve somewhere. They need to go somewhere to feel balanced or stable. Exactly. And so going into what exactly makes something stable and unstable is going down a bit of a music theory rabbit hole. So you'll just have to trust us for the moment that one, three, and five in the key are stable notes. Two, four, six, and seven are unstable notes. And if we accept that, we can use that information in the bits of the song that we're trying to build tension in, right? So one technique that we can do is to make sure that our pre-chorus ends on an unstable note. So we're going to perform for you a section of the song Never Enough from the movie The Greatest Showman. Four. You set off a dream in me Yet in love Can you hear it Take my hand, will you share this with me? Cause darling, without you, of all the shine of a thousand spotlights, of all the stars that we steal from the night sky, will never be enough. So what I want to do is zoom our attention in to a single note in that pre-chorus, the last note of the pre-chorus, because that line goes like this. Cause darling, without you. And if we zoom into what that note is in context of the key, it is the note two, because here is one, right? So in this key, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one. It's an A note in the key of G. So that last note of the pre-chorus is packed with tension. It wants to resolve. And the beautiful thing about what they've done in this song, which is so clever, is that they do resolve it to one, but not by going down, by going up. 
<laughs> and I love that as a technique, they still get the resolution. You still get that satisfying, you know, two to one. But that jump up the octave is like another way to just, you know, build some energy, give mm. us a little surprise, mm. whilst also giving us that satisfaction of the resolution. Mm. So there's a relationship of tension to resolution. Mm. And if you end your pre-chorus on this dangling, unstable note, it is asking for an answer. It's asking for resolution, right? And so that instability of that tense note, that unstable mm. note, is a great way to build in tension mm. to your pre-chorus. The third melodic technique that we want to share with you is the technique of syncopation. So syncopation is when the melodic notes fall on the upbeats in the bar. So in a bar of four, we have one, two, three, four. Or we can also think of it as one and two and three and four and. And so it's putting the melodic notes on those little ands between the beats. Mm. Okay. So what I want to do is demonstrate this technique by singing for you part of the song Need You Now by Lady Antebellum. And the thing that I want you to hear is that the melody of the verse falls on the beats, right? Mostly on the beats. And then we get to the pre-chorus and it flips. Mm. The notes of the pre-chorus are falling on those syncopations. They're falling on the upbeats between the downbeats of the bar. Should we play? Two, three. Get your perfect memory scattered all around the floor. Reaching for the phone cause I can't find it anymore. And I wonder if I ever cross your So obviously I over-exaggerated <laughs> the like staccato nature of the syncopation in the pre-chorus, but only to really demonstrate how that rhythm flips mm. from being really focusing on the downbeats of the bar in the verse melody, and then is all on those upbeats during the pre-chorus. And then when we go back into the chorus, it goes back to emphasizing mm. the downbeat, but that syncopation creates contrast and tension, mm. right? Those little in-between moments are full of tension and instability. Yeah. The fourth melodic concept I want to talk about is creating an ABA melodic structure. So when I use the terms ABA, I'm defining the melodic motifs that exist inside the melody, right? So we're saying there's an A melody, which is a little melodic idea. Then we have a B melody, which is a contrasting melodic idea. And then you come back to the first idea, you repeat it. And what happens when you repeat anything is that the brain starts to recognize pattern. Hmm. So if you've constructed an initial pattern that goes A, B, and then you return to A, the brain is naturally now expecting you to sing B again, right? To complete the pattern that you've started again. Hmm. So we can use this pattern recognition thing that happens in the human brain to create tension because what is the opposite of resolution? Tension, right? So if we refuse to resolve a pattern, we are leaving this big open question, right? We are not resolving. And when we don't resolve, we create this sort of opening abyss of instability that we can then fill with the chorus. Right. So it's a bold and daring move to do, because I think that for a lot of us, we have this real instinct to resolve, you know, to constantly resolve things, to resolve melody, to resolve pattern, to resolve rhyme scheme. So it requires us to exercise restraint. But that restraint is so worth it, particularly in the pre-chorus. Mm. So we're going to play for you a bit of a song the song She Burns by Foy Vance, which uses this ABA melodic structure in the pre-chorus that creates so much instability and then creates this beautiful kind of unexpected moment when the chorus actually arrives. Two, three, four. She is a little explosion of hope. Never turns the lights down low She can go there if you want to know There are no marks
markings on her country roads No signs to show them way back home But when you get there you won't want to go I've frozen over my desire Covered up with virgin snow But when I stand beside her She burns, yeah She burns like petrol soap paper fireworks So let's zoom in here mm. on the melody of the pre-chorus, okay? So the first line of the pre-chorus is I've frozen over my desire And we can call that the A phrase, right? We recognise that as one little melodic sentence then we get the B phrase, which is almost like question and answer, right? Like, covered up in virgin snow. So we've got this A, B, and then it identifiably returns to the thing we just heard. When I stand beside her, right? So we get the A thing again, and our brain wants to hear, that's the moment that I know, <laughs> right? And it would be so easy to resolve that, and I think that that's a lot of our default instinct is to sort of balance things and make them symmetrical. But when we balance things and make them symmetrical, we are by definition resolving it and mm. making it stable. Mm. And that is quite literally antithetical to what the function of a pre-chorus is. So you're saying that if we keep it unstable, if we keep it unbalanced, we get to leverage the, the energy and the tension within that structure. And specifically the energy and tension within creating a pattern mm. that creates expectation that it is going to resolve in a particular way and then you don't resolve it okay. <laughs> at the end. Yeah, so no resolution, expecting it to resolve. Mm. Take all of that expectation and all that energy into the chorus. Exactly. Nice. Yeah. Okay, so the fifth and final melodic technique that I wanna talk about is the idea of creating contour contrast. So we talked about contours hmm. in terms of rising contours and rising contours inherently in and of themselves build energy. But if we think about melodies as being shapes and directions, we can simply say, well, what is something that is contrasting hmm. to what we already have? And particularly if we're building up to something like a chorus, a big chorus that's gonna have a big leap right, one of the things we can actually do is have a much more restrained melodic contour. And a really great example of this is the song Believer by Imagine Dragons. Two, three, four. Second day, second, don't you tell me what you think that it could be. I'm the one at the sail, I'm the master of my sea, oh, ooh, ooh, the master of my sea, oh, ooh, ooh. I was broken from a young age, took my soak in to the masses, writing my poems for the few. contrast between the verse melody and the pre-chorus melody, right? Like the verse melody, like it's got this real wavy movie. It's sort of going up and down and up and down, right? It's really movable melody, really fun to sing. And then the melody of the pre-chorus is then really static, right? And it actually goes down, right? It doesn't go up in pitch or it's not building energy that way. It's actually building energy by restraining, mm. right? So restraining in terms of pitch or note going down, right? And so it almost sounds like Morse code. <laughs> it's like, yeah. you know, but it's just that sticking with that one note and then, right? So there's this little movement there going mm. up, but it's such minuscule movement and what I love about this is kind of going from this real movie melody mm. to this very restrained quite static melody in the pre-chorus which then makes that da, 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 right going up there yeah. really dramatic once yeah. we've been down here and quite stayed quite consistent and static yeah to then leap up and then have this really again a much more moving yeah. melody in the chorus is a very dramatic contrast. And it takes on a more rhythmic function, doesn't it? You know, that it's really driving forward. 
which again creates this beautiful contrast when you get, get that kind of boom. Yeah, exactly. You know, the, the, the explosion of that chorus happens because you've been driving mm, with that exactly. rhythmic pulse mm. just beforehand. So good. Yeah. So there you have it, those five techniques, melodic techniques, for emphasizing, creating, cultivating tension mm. in the pre-chorus, which remember, is not just the bit before the chorus, it's the bit that creates tension before the chorus. So we've now looked in this video at melodic techniques, in a previous video we looked at chord techniques, and in an upcoming video we're going to look at structural techniques for creating tension in your pre-chorus, which is really just a sneaky way of delivering a chorus with more power and more impact. Good luck. Happy writing. We'll see you soon. Bye.